Our first inductee, one of the early women pioneers in the field of medicine specializing in radiology. Dr. Janice Owens Aaron became the chair of the Diagnostic Radiology of the University of Louisville School of Medicine, becoming only the third woman in U.S. history to hold such a position at that time. The 1998 Hall of Distinguished Alumni honoree, Kentucky Lieutenant Governor Dr. Steve Henry, received his radiology training under the direction of Dr. Aaron at the University of Louisville. She's published one book and has had extensive published research and professional publications in the medical literature. Dr. Aaron has practiced medicine since 1978 and has taught radiology since 1993. This year's first inductee, Dr. Janice Owens Aaron. Uh, I thought Western was the only university. Uh, when I was in high school, my sister went to school there and I had a lot of opportunity to be down there. She was five years older than me during the period of time when she was, was there. And I thought that this was the only university. I couldn't imagine anybody ever wanting to go anyplace else. Dr. Janice Aaron didn't arrive at Western like most students. She was already a registered nurse and she was also a mother. I um, attended uh, pre-med as a, a single parent and one of the things that is nearest and dearest to me is remembering how wonderful all my professors were and encouraging even though at that point in time it was very unusual for not only a woman to be um, in pre-med but uh, especially a, a, a woman that, um, that had, had a child. And I'm not sure I could have made it anyplace else. The University of Louisville Medical School was her next stop. She says it wasn't nearly as difficult as she thought it would be. When I got into medical school at the University of Louisville, it was a breeze compared to what I'd been doing at Western. You know, the pre-med med program there was very rigorous. I was working, and uh, to me, to just go to school, well, it, it was very uh, easy compared to, to what it had uh, transpired at, at, uh, at Western. After a residency at Yale and a fellowship at Harvard, Dr. Aaron came back to Louisville. She went from associate clinical professor to chair of the Department of Diagnostic Radiology at U of L. And at the time, only two other women nationwide held such a position. And Janice stepped into a really important leadership role at that time. Now, you remember she'd been here as a student, but been away for 10 or 12 years. And she came back and stepped into this and not only made radiology really good and a keystone part of, of uh, the University of Louisville Hospital, but she exerted an influence, I thought, for really good on the whole medical school faculty. Her impact on a lot of other students and residents, whether they were going into radiology or just going to be frontline practitioner medicine, were tremendous. Dr. Aaron was appointed director of the Imaging Center at St. Anthony. When Vencore bought St. Anthony's, Dr. Aaron and her employees feared they might lose their jobs. But after a meeting with the Vencore CEO, she was assured all would stay intact. And while she had his ear, and I said, incidentally, they're doing teleradiology in a lot of places around the world now. It's just, a, uh, just starting out. And uh, if you have any need for that, I'd be very interested in, in pursuing that with you. Well, this really ignited a, a spark with uh, this person. He said, as a matter of fact, we really need te teleradiology in the worst kind of way because many of our hospitals are small and uh, most of our patients have had their mega workups before they come to the hospital. So we have a hard time sometimes getting radiologists to, to read our films because the volume is low. But when our patients need films, it's generally an emergency. They need them right away and they need someone to read them right away. So uh, what we ended up doing was setting up teleradiology in all of these hospitals around the country. She also was one of the first people to get in the business of what's called teleradiology but it's basically where you can read and interpret x-rays through television. And uh, now it seems like a pretty simple idea, but she quickly built a program as one of the prototypes for the whole world in which she was doing all of the chest x-rays and things from all the Vencore rehabilitation hospitals all over America. No one had uh, done this on quite the magnitude or in quite the, quite the way that, that we were doing it. 
so uh, we had a lot of technical uh, problems that we had to work out. We worked closely with um, um, the company that uh, that uh, produces the monitors and, and transmits the images and eventually uh, got most of the bugs worked out. It's, it's still evolving, but uh, it's been fun, it's been exciting. Uh, it was a totally different concept, but I think we very significantly raised the level of care that our patients in the Bencore hospitals got because we were literally at the bedside 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And as if she isn't busy enough, Dr. Aaron is also a general radiologist and neuroradiologist at the Jane Todd Hospital in Greensburg. I think the, the challenge is always to uh, be accessible as much as you can and I think you always have to the main thing is to maintain high standards and have really high quality and I particularly like to be creative to come up with creative solutions and one of the big advantages of being in this hospital and then the the small hospital is that we do telerad here for that hospital a couple three years ago I had just a terrible problem on my back and I wasn't going anywhere in the world except to see her and get her opinion about that. In fact, I did that before I, I talked to any other doctor because, you know, diagnosis is the keystone of most good medical practice and she's obviously the person you sought out in a minute. She credits all her colleagues and friends for the ability to stay focused. I've been very, very fortunate to have excellent um, uh, assistance over the years. Um, I have friends and um, other people that I work with in the, in the profession that, that uh, have lots of skills. And when you can kind of uh, bring a lot of skills together from different people, um, it um, allows you to, to, um, uh, to be successful. Ronna Lee Hunter, who taught with Dr. Aaron at the Bowling Green Vocational School, and her husband, retired Western chemistry professor Norman Hunter, a one-time tutor to Dr. Aaron, have always admired her determination. Well, she's just probably one of the most motivated people I've known in my career in teaching in health-related fields. Uh, she was pleasant. She was uh, able to relate to all age groups, and of course, we worked with young people and she was very good with them and very good with her uh, peers. Uh, there was a sizable faculty there and uh, always cheerful, always forward-looking. Uh, she just had all the earmarks of a person who set goals and reached them. But she was a very uh, unusual uh, student, uh, was not satisfied just to uh, have the barest essentials. She wanted to dig much deeper and uh, know the material and understand the material. Dr. Aaron says she learned early on that she must have courage and stamina to face her many challenges. I would sort of get up every day and look in the mirror and say, you know, you have one shot with this, this child and you, you have to, that's the most important thing is you have to keep him on track and then other things um, are, are secondary. But I also think the very fact that in addition to being a super specialist, she was able to go out and practice in an environment in which she really had a grassroots kind of hold on medicine, medical practice and on a more important part of the mid part of the state is, is one of the keystones of the whole story. To me, I think the most important thing is to stay positive and absolutely any situation that comes along, if you can stay positive and try to find um, ways that you can turn uh, lemons into lemonade, if you will. I just can't say enough about Janice as a, as a student, willing always to grasp for the highest ring in terms of getting her own training. And then maybe, maybe most sentimentally of all, coming back to Kentucky to practice and to bring those skills back here and then not ever being willing sort of to say, um, you know, enough's enough. She was always trying for something over and above that. And she contributed through the medical school, through the hospital, and through the whole business of advancements in radiology. 1999 Hall of Distinguished Alumni Honoree, Dr. Janice Aaron. I tell you, the buzz lady's hard to act to follow. But uh, thank you very much for that wonderful presentation. I mean, I'm really kind of choked up about it. Um, but um, moving on here, one of the things that I noticed this morning, I came to a very um, 
uh, profound conclusion was that the reason God lets women as they get older, lets their eyesight kind of go, so they won't see the wrinkles. <laughs> that was the bad side of that, uh, that film. Boy, they really stood out. <laughs> I am having an absolutely wonderful time. I don't know how else to say it. I have had just a delightful time. I don't know when I've had an opportunity to uh, just sit down and have such, while I'm having fun, have meet with such intellectually stimulating and challenging people. And I just want to thank uh, Gary and Judy last night. We had a wonderful time at their place. And all my friends for coming. Um, sitting at the table over here, I have my mother-in-law, Jesse Aaron, and uh, Judy Poor, whom I went to grade school with, good friend. And my wonderful uh, longtime friend and neighbor, Joyce Williams, lives across this, the road from me. And she's the one that uh, motivated me to buy a farm in Henry County. And Billy Henthorne, who's sitting next to her, is one of those absolutely wonderful support people that Billy and I have worked together, what, 14, 15 years in lots of different capacities. And she's a computer whiz, does research for me. Really appreciate her taking a day off and coming down. And normally, and Rhonda uh, Hunter, they were just so supportive of me when Rhonda and I taught together. They actually, at the vocational school here, developed programs around my college curriculum so that I could teach and still go to school at the same time. And Rhonda was just, uh, she was my, um, we taught the same kind of types of classes and she, she was, um, she and Rhonda were just always motivational. I told them that they were the happiest couple I'd ever known and they were always my role models for what one should, uh, kind of relationship that one could have. And they are, have um, uh, had an ongoing influence. I, I told Rana I didn't know if she remembered it or not, but over the years when I was a uh, student here and was getting ready to leave and go to uh, medical school, she gave me the little book, Jonathan, Jonathan Livingston Seagull. And I don't know if any of you are familiar with that book or not, but she said, you remind me of Jonathan Livingston Seagull. This book reminds me of you. And she gave it to me and I thought, well, what a wonderful thing to say. So over the years, when things got really tough, which they did many times, I'd pull out my little book and read it and say, well, maybe I can do this. If Rana thought that I'm like this little guy who just keeps trying and trying, then, then that's what I should do. So that, that meant a lot to me. And then moving along, I, I was just really surprised and so happy today to see some of my former professors here. And I will tell you that any place I have ever been, I've had absolutely no problem with uh, my pre-med background standing me in good stead. I think that beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's the best program in the state, and I'm not alone in thinking that. And it has, any place I've ever been, it stood me in great stead. But above and beyond that, we, um, Dr. Youngblast is here and Dr. Reesner, and they were wonderful, wonderful professors. And, I think Dr. Reisner is just the kindest man I've, I've ever known. He is just was so supportive and so nice. Uh, I remember uh, in my physics class, looking back, that um, we had um, finals going on. And so I came bopping in in my mini skirt. And now I'm just like, did we really wear skirts that short? I can't believe it. Uh, and I uh, was walking down the hall, and my professor came out and said, Jan, are you okay? And I said, yeah, why? He said, well, he said, you know, you've, you've got an A minus, and why didn't you take the test yesterday? I said, the test yesterday? I thought it was tomorrow. I said, it's a Tuesday, Thursday, and they're supposed to be on Saturday. Yes, but, and I had missed my final exam. So he said, come on in, sit down, take this test. <laughs> so if he hadn't let me do that, I would have made a really bad score. And that would have been uh, absolutely detrimental uh, to my application to medical school. Other stories, uh, one I'd kind of forgotten, Dr. Youngba said that I came back from my medical school interviews and they'd been, they, they could have just said to me, look, you got a kid, you, know, you got a career, you're a nurse. You know, why don't you buzz off and go, 
go uh, do something else and, you know, live happily ever after. But they didn't. They said, you know, you want to be a doctor, we'll do all we can. If you do your part, we'll, we'll do what we can to help you out. And I came back from, I went to University of Kentucky, and now this all seems like, uh, thank goodness it's history. And uh, went in and um, the first thing I had a really tough surgeon for that was doing the interviewing and I walked in and he said, well, what are you gonna do with this kid? Put him up for adoption? He said, you cannot do medical school and have a child. Okay. So we went on and talked a little further and so I left there, I was very discouraged. And I came back and Dr. Youngblood said, I came in to see him and said, thank you for being so tough. I was, I was prepared <laughs> whenever they were pretty tough on me in my interview. But um, they said, uh, uh, Dr. Reasoner, Dr. Youngblood, they said, don't get discouraged, keep going on, keep hanging in there. And then probably some of the most people, important people at all were my classmates. Uh, I was absolutely thrilled today to see uh, one of my good classmates, Ron, uh, here he and uh, Chuck Polk and I were lab uh, uh, lab partners and they were so good they were, to me and to, to Trent, my son, and I really appreciate that. So I'm having an absolute ball. Uh, the people that the other inductees are, are uh, stars, they really are. I, I looked around and I tried to figure out um, how or why or what would um, distinguish, make us distinguish alumni, and I think that all Western graduates are distinguished alumni, and I'm really happy to be included in the overall body, and especially in, in this group, but um, I guess the thing that makes me a little different is being female, and I guess it's very common for people to ask me advice about young women, and I think that um, uh, how they can succeed in predominantly male uh, fields. And I think that the biggest problem that women have, and one of the things that I'm impressed with, with Western and what, what you're doing here, is um, competing. I, I, I think women aren't traditionally brought up, and I think they are much more so now than I was, to compete. And I think sports are very, very important. I think getting your young girls um, into sports where they learn to compete. Uh, I can compete, and I do compete, but I, I really don't like it. And I really think that men grow up with sports, guys do, and that they, uh, that, that helps them to uh, not only uh, compete well, but, but they, they actually enjoy competition. And uh, I think if we can get more women to have that uh, mindset, that that will be a really good thing. Um, I think everybody needs to take a negotiations course, male or female, early in life because life is just one big series of negotiating. And I think that was something that was very uh, helpful to me. Um, there is, of course, no substitute for persistence and, and hard work. Uh, as women, I think you have to definitely carry your load. Um, everyone does, but I think especially women have to. But I think it's critically important that you not get too busy that you don't have time to think and plan and commu communicate with other important players in your life. Finally, I guess um, uh, a statement that Robert Kennedy made that said, do what you fear. And I think that's what I did here at Western and did with pre-med. I was terribly afraid that I wouldn't get into medical school uh, for the reasons I've talked about. And uh, over the years, I think that that's, that's a really good thing to do, is do what you fear, do what you're afraid of, work through it and, and, and pass on to, um, to the other side. Um, again, I'd like to thank you. I'm so overwhelmed with the things that you're doing here that are so essential in education in this day and age. And, um, you can't just, as all of you, I'm spe speaking to the choir, know there's no way that you can, can uh, subsist on state funds anymore and those kinds of things. And, and you're really out there, you're getting grants, you're getting, uh, getting into entrepreneurial kinds of things. 
getting students out to where they have real experience before they're placed on the job and not just theoretical things out of books. But most importantly, uh, as good a leader as, as, uh, as Gary is, you know, this isn't Gary's college. And the thing that, that I found today, every place I went more and more, is this filters down uh, to, uh, uh, to Dr. Houston and his department. People really have bought into this. They really are buying into the things that the university is doing. And I feel very encouraged that, you know, that Western is going to be successful for a long time. So I've probably said way too much. But uh, thank you, everyone, for including me in these festivities and this, uh, this really wonderful honor. Let's give Dr. Erin one last round of applause. She's an inspiration to all women.